Good morning, good morning St. John's and good morning those who are visiting us for the first time and to, to all those watching us um, on live stream, good morning to you too and we thank the Lord that we are here together to worship him and to praise his name and we thank God that um, we have uh, made it through the night and we give him thanks and praise for all that. As we uh, begin our worship this morning, um, there are just one or two announcements for those who are here in the church. Uh, you may have noticed that when you came in, you, didn't, um, you were not handed the track and trace card. We've decided not to use them for the, for the time being. Well, I said for the time being, we've decided not to use them for now um, for various reasons and also the fact that we really haven't had any um, cases of um, uh, COVID um, reported to us in the time that we've been using them. So for some time, we will leave that for the moment. Um, if there is the need to um, redo that, to restart that, we will start again. Um, so you don't need to worry yourself about uh, filling in a track and trace card. However, um, we still, um, we're still in that time when the, the, the COVID virus is rising. Um, in various parts of the country. So please, the basic stuff needs to be continued. Um, sanitize your hands, and if you're able to, please wear a mask if you're able to. Again, that is not mandatory, but um, we would encourage you to do so. Um, when it comes to communion, I will give you the instructions for that. Um, and also, we will not be passing a bucket round um, for offering um, but if you wish to make an offering, please do um, just go to the back of the church and ask any of the welcomers. They'll be more happy to, to show you where the bucket is. Otherwise, you're very welcome indeed. And we are here to worship God. And I'll hand over to Ayo, um, who is leading our worship today. Ayo. Good morning, St. John's. Let us still our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and for a time like this to be in your presence. We pray for your mercy. We pray, Lord, that as we have come to you this morning, may we be acceptable in your sight. And may everything we do bring glory and honor to your holy name. Psalm 103 says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord. So as we begin our worship this morning, we'll start with our opening hymn. Breathe on me, breath of life. May we arise. i 
Let us be silent for a moment and in our hearts let us thank God for the grace to be here. He watches over us on a daily basis. So we need to be grateful that he is our God. Okay, and as we take the prayer of preparation, which is on the blue sheet, may our hearts be filled with his glory. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. I'm sure in the course of the week, I'm sure we might not have lived right in the presence of God. But our God is faithful and when we come to him to confess our sins, he's able to forgive us. So we'll take the confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. The grace of God has drawn upon the world with healing for all mankind. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The special prayer for today. Lord God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church. Give us, we pray, the gifts of the Spirit to equip us to live out the gospel of Christ and make us eager 
to do your will that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Okay, and as we continue in worship, I invite Richard. Thank you, Aya. Good morning, family. How are we all doing? Hello. Um, it's been an interesting week for me this week. Uh, my school, I, I teach at the Urswick School in, in Hackney, as some of you may know, and that's a Church of England school. And we had a, a faith inspection this week. It's essentially an Ofsted inspection for faith schools. I popped a, uh, Robert kindly popped a little notice in the prayer requests last week, and if you saw that and prayed for it, thank you. And while that process is still ongoing, and I can't talk about, um, I don't yet know quite how it's gone, um, one, one shining thing came out. Uh, the point of this inspection is to see how we operate, not only as a school, but as a Church of England school, as a beacon for Christ's education in England and Wales. And uh, as part of this process, the lead inspector interviewed some of the students themselves. And amongst the things she was asking, she, she asked them, what do you think your experience is like at a Church of England school that it wouldn't be in a, in a, non, a non-faith school? And they said, almost without flinching, prayer. We pray a lot. And yes, there's the slight teenage they make us pray, miss. But I loved that that's what they reached to. I loved that the fact that, that they recognized, uh, having not been to it, I mean, they've only ever been to a Church of England school. They have no frame of reference for knowing what it would be like in one of the local academies. But they recognized being part of the Anglican communion means reaching out to God, grounding everything they do in prayer, praying a lot. And we're thinking today about those great tongues of fire visited down upon us by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and what it means for us to be able to be in touch with our God, to communicate to him through the Spirit to pray, to pray to God. And so in our worship today, let's be thankful that there are young people in our, in our community, in our communion, who recognize that the great power they have, the opportunity they have to pray. Let's pray ourselves. Let's feel, let's feel connected to that God who is above all, who allows us to bridge the chasm between our frail, sinful humanity and his great glory, and who is worthy of praise. These are the three songs we sing now. Please stand with me and let our lips, even if they are behind masks, praise our great Redeemer, our almighty Saviour. Please do stand with me and sing to the Restorer of our souls. Almighty 
You may be seated. It is such a joy to know that Jesus Christ is our living hope. I'll call upon Gigi to send the children out. And we are going to sing um, I Am a New Creation. But the children, is going to be sung twice. The children will stay in for the first time and the second time they will go to their classes. Good morning, Sing Zhuang. I actually trembling. <laughs> I enjoy the worship. I enjoy the music. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to send out the children and young people. Um, so um, today uh, we have uh, the following helpers who help us. AD, Marilyn for the ARC, Sylvia and Sam for Kingdom Kids, and um, Gladys and Rose for uh, J Team, and Richard and Shiner for the Teen Life, and also Jokes, yes, for the YPF. So we are going to sing um, the new creation. And JN, we are company with us for the first time and uh, uh, help us. And all the children, you can go to your room after the first time. Okay? So please stand. Please be seated. Okay, our first reading will be taken by Bridget. And Robert will take the gospel and he will also preach to us. Good morning, church. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Your reading's on your blue sheet. So that's Acts 4, sorry, Acts 2, 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. (coughs) This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Thanks, Bridget. And our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, reading from verse 7 to 12. 
Please stand if you can, and we'll read the gospel together. Matthew 3, reading from verse 7. Hear the holy gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. But when he saw many of the, of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe has been laid to the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with, fire, with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'll start with a little bit of a, a testimony. It's not a, a glamorous testimony. It's just my experience of what we might call being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I went to a school in Uganda, um, a Christian, well, you could say Christian school, but it was founded by Christian missionaries. And for many years, we had a very strong Christian tradition. Um, I was part of the, um, the, the uh, what do you call it, um, not Sunday school, um, the Bible school, or Bible class group. Um, we called it Contact, the Christian group. Um, and the, the, pers- the, the way of sort of being a part of that fellowship, really, was, first of all, of course, that you um, receive Christ into your heart as your personal savior. I mean, that, that was the first thing that um, uh, most of us would do, and that's why you would be there in that fellowship. You receive Christ as your savior. And then after a while, um, somebody would come to you and you know, have a chat with you about the Holy Spirit. And um, the, 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 the point of this was that you would be prayed for and prayed with um, at a particular moment, and um, then you would prompt the Spirit um, by practicing speaking in tongues. Now, whatever that tradition might be, you know, whether it's a, a good thing to do or not, I think it helped me in a way because it, it gave me the courage to open my spirit to um, God's spirit and to be able to tap into um, God's spirit. Maybe the method was probably not the way that most people would do it. Um, and of course, um, if you immediately spoke in tongues, you'd really got it. If you took a bit longer, that was another story. You'd keep trying until you got it. Now, some of you probably have similar um, experiences uh, um, you know, from where, you know, when you were at school or you know, wherever you um, come from. But I, I think the, the idea of being filled with the Spirit was something very unique. In the Anglican Church, and I hope I'm getting this right, um, we are baptized um, at the beginning, either um, maybe as a baby, as an infant, um, or as an adult. And that is the beginning of your journey, your Christian walk. Um, you are baptized, and on some occasions, of course, um, you are probably confirmed on the same day. And I believe that the, the idea of confirmation is that you would be therefore um, blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, at that point, the Spirit of God comes upon you, or the Spirit of God begins to indwell you. Well, whatever the method may be, I think there is a genuine experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is not just something that is in the Bible that we use, um, that we celebrate um, where, you know, at Pentecost um, when the Spirit came upon the disciples as in the passage we've just read. No, it is a very real lived experience that we need to tap into. Alluding to a little bit on the passage we've just read, John came he was prophesied by um, Isaiah that um, one who will come and make a way first. Someone would come and make a way 
for this great servant of God. He'd come and prepare the way. And um, he comes with that mission to prepare the way. And in doing so, he started by um, preaching the, bapti um, the baptism of repentance, which had some sense of the Old Testament experience. Um, and, and the idea was you are being washed by water, cleansed completely. You're, you're being washed through um, by water, symbolically, of course, um, and re repenting of your sin, turning around in your ways, to making a U-turn in your life. But then John then says, there is one who comes after me. Who will, he, I baptize with water, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And you've probably seen some um, churches around, um, you know, the, 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 the holy, uh, the church of the Holy Spirit of fire and tongues or something or other, okay? This person would fill you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Not just a statement, he would do it. That spirit would come into your being. How do we know that? Because we have the testimony of that in the first reading in Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Very interesting. The Spirit of God comes upon us and indwells us. The Spirit of God comes upon us and indwells us. Not just so that I speak in tongues, but because the Spirit of God has worked within us. To work in us, to work through us, that we may bear fruit. Let me kind of borrow something that John said before in the passage that we just read. He spoke to the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. You brood of vipers, he says. Why don't you live with fruit, the co correct fruit of your lives? Well, let me borrow that and use that in our context. The Spirit of God indwells us that we may bear fruit, that we may be people of God, not just people who call themselves Christians, but that there is fruit in our lives. Amen. So, the Spirit of God came upon the disciples, and of course it gave them utterance. It changed, it, it changed the way they spoke. And somehow the people who had gathered in Jerusalem heard their language, spoken by people who had never learned their language. Now these were, of course, Jews who came from other parts of the world to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost was a Jewish feast. Uh, it, it is not necessarily a Christian feast. It is a Jewish feast. But on this particular day, the Spirit of God gave utterance to the disciples to speak good news to those who were gathered around. So the Spirit of God enabled the disciples to open their mouths and they spoke the gospel to those who were gathered. That is one of the things that the Spirit does for us. The Spirit enables us to be able to communicate this message the message of God's love to his people, the message of God's love to his world. The Spirit of God enables us to be able to communicate with others what God is saying to the world, what God is saying to the rest of humanity. It's not, I don't believe that the Spirit of God comes upon us as an emblem or some kind of, um, I've now received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I have a much better um, uh, level in my Christianity. No, the Spirit comes into our lives to change us, to make us into the image of God, to make us like his Son. So, wh where does that leave us? Today, tomorrow, every day? Well, brothers and sisters, the receiving the Spirit of God, first of all, is not a difficult thing. Why do I say that? Because all we need to do is ask. God says, ask. If you ask of my Spirit, am I not going to give you my Spirit? Of course he will give us his Spirit. 
So ask his spirit. And when his spirit comes upon you, his spirit will inspire you, work in your life, change your life, that you may bear fruit in the world that you live. What does that look like in our world today? Well, we all have different um, places that we live and places that we go and um, people that we um, have uh, contact with and um, all sorts of connections that we have. If the Spirit of God is within us, if the Spirit of God works within us, if the Spirit of God is visible in our lives, then we affect the lives of other people in our world. And if the Spirit of God is working in our lives, then the Spirit of God will work in our communities. And the Spirit of God will work in our families. The Spirit of God will work in our country to change the things of our nation. The Spirit of God will work in all that we are to bring the work and the purpose of God upon this earth. When we say, may your kingdom come, the Spirit of God does that for us. The other day, I think it was two days ago, an MP was murdered in South End. Now, um, I don't know, some of you may know him. I, I think Brian said he, he knew him and he always came and, and met with him. Um, but as I listened to the story of the, the death of this gentleman, and uh, actually not the death, but uh, the life of this gentleman, what I tended to, what I kept on hearing was the fruit of his life, what he had done in the community. He wasn't, um, he wasn't a, a, a member of the clergy, he wasn't a, a reverend, he wasn't... Um, you know, ordained or anything like that. But he was somebody who believed in God and he had a faith in himself. He had a faith in God. And somehow that faith, the fruit of that faith, the fruit of that life came out to the people whom he that he interacted with, the people he connected with. And so they were able to then give the testimony. He was a good man. People from all sides of the parliament would say he was a good man and he did this and he did that and he did all sorts of things because what I feel what came out of his life was the fruit of God's spirit working in his life you see God's spirit does not come into our life to make us all um, um, jiggery and all excited and all that sort of thing I believe that God works his best work in the silences of our life and his spirit works in us every single day of our lives to turn us, to change us, to make us more into the image of his son. If you try it in your own strength, you fail. If you try to be a Christian in your own strength, you will fail because this is of God. This is God's work and God's spirit enables these things to happen in our lives. How else can that apply to us? I've I mentioned this so many times, and I'll say it again. I'll just encourage you once again, brothers and sisters. God's Spirit knows everything. You do not know everything. Does anybody here know everything? Only, well, you're trying, but I don't think so. We do not know. Oh, Barry, you know everything. All right, fine. Okay, the exception. Um, but we don't know everything. But the Spirit of God knows everything everything. And I've shared this testimony once before. My wife and I were looking for a, a flat. This is our testimony, but I thought I'd share it with you. And we saw a flat that was fantastic. Brilliant. No problem. And, you know, the, the person, the um, estate agents thought it was perfect for us as a young couple, newly married, and this was, this was perfect. And when we left the flat and we went back to the car and we were now just thinking about it because the estate agents just wanted us to sign and everything. I said to Florence, my wife, I said, why don't we pray about this? Why don't we pray about this? Why don't we ask the Spirit of God to help us to see what we cannot see? Because it looks fantastic, it looks wonderful, it looks excellent, but what is it I don't see? that the Spirit of God can see. A few days down the line, the, the estate agents rang us and he was very, very angry. There was something very, he, he was really upset. The landlady, um, finding out who we were and you know, our background and so on, 
decided, no, I don't want to let this flag to those kind of people. Now, <laughs> it, it, uh, we didn't know the mind of this lady. We didn't know her spirit or her heart, but she had an issue. She had never seen us, never met us, but she had an issue. And somehow, the Lord had flagged it up for us. Somehow. Brothers and sisters, there are some of you who might be looking for partners, husbands, wives, whatever. Let the Spirit of God help you there. You may be looking for a job. Let the Spirit of God help you there. You may be, whatever it may be, whatever that situation may be, your illness or whatever it is, let the Spirit of God lead the way in whatever that may be. Because God's Spirit knows everything. And the Spirit of God knows the mind of the Father. The Spirit of God knows the mind of the Son. And He is our gift forever and forever and forever. Amen? I'll leave it there. Can we, um, if you are able to please stand and we'll join in the Nicene Creed together. You'll find it on your blue sheets. If you're able to stand, we'll join in the Creed and we'll share this together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll continue with our prayers and Shiva is going to lead us in the rest of our prayers. Please be seated. Good morning, family. Good morning, Shiva. Nice to see you all. So let us pray. Gracious and most loving Father, we thank you for your spirit in us that sets our hearts ablaze. Without him, we have no power. In him we live, move, breathe, and have our being. Forgive us for the many times that we have quenched the burning of your spirit within us by failing to act according to your word. We bow in reverence before you now. Father, as we pray, meet us and your suffering world at the very point of our need. Lord, in your mercy. God of all power, shake the leaders of the nations and all in authority. Show them your good and perfect will for your world and help them to act justly and in righteousness so that good may come out of the chaos we are in. And I'm going to ask you now that if you know of countries that are really suffering, can you just shout the name of that country out, please? Thank you. Afghanistan.
Mm-hmm. I shout St. Vincent. So, Father, we bring all these countries before you, all these names that have been mentioned. mentioned. We pray, Lord, that you will have mercy upon each country. Help them at their point of need. You know what their needs are more than we do. So reach out to them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of the living Lord, fall afresh upon your church as you did on the day of Pentecost. Revive our bishops, vicars, priests, deacons, and all ministers of your word. Teach us to speak the words you are speaking in faith and love without fear of the enemy that the world may see your power at work in us and seek to serve you too. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we thank you for the wisdom and strength that you are giving to Robert, Florence, and all the team working together here to accomplish your plan and purpose. We thank you also for Dan, Ellie, and the team at Christ Church Three Meals. We pray for your continued wisdom and blessing on the forthcoming plans for both churches as we think ahead of Christmas. Lord, we ask that you kindle the hearts of members, stir them to use a little of their time, gifts, and talents in the church for your service. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray for our mission links. And this month, we pray for Food Bank, the Stratford Food Bank, and all volunteers. We pray for all the clients. Father, may they find help, support, and friendship at the Food Bank. And we pray that you will let your blessings be on this ministry. Let it be continued to your praise and glory. Father, I bring to you the carpenter's estate, once again facing unrest due to the council's plan for demolition. Lord, I ask that you make a way for us and grant peace to everyone living there. We pray for our young people, especially those off to university for the first time. Protect them from the hands of the wicked one. Help them to have the right words to say to others who may try to lead them astray, that they too may turn and follow you. And Father, we pray for an end to knife crime and all that makes for evil in our community and everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of the living God, breathe on the sick and suffering. In a moment of silence, let us name in our hearts those known to us. Father, we thank you. And together with those that we have named in our hearts, we lay before you Anjum, Minta, Kay's mother, Margaret, Tom, Millie's husband, Bernadette, unwell but receiving kidney treatment, Marcia, having medical treatment, Kate, who's unwell, Ivy, Maria's mom, we also pray for Maria, for James, for June, for Mercy, for Denise, having an operation on her back in November, for Melina, Reverend Ivor's wife. And we pray for all who are suffering from coronavirus, from coronavirus, and not just coronavirus, but from all illnesses. 
whatever that illness may be. We pray, Lord, that you will reach them, touch them, lay your healing hands upon them. Let them know, Father God, that you are a God who heals and who saves. As you touch them, Lord, restore them, that they may come back and give you the praise and the glory for the great things you have done for them. And Father, we give thanks for Thomas's operation, which went well, and we pray for his continued recovery. We give thanks also for Bev's recovery from her recent operation. We give thanks for Bridget's mom, who had her birthday yesterday. So Father God, we give you thanks for everything, all the things that we forget to thank you for. We lay them before you now, and we thank you. We give you thanks, Father, for those who have died in the faith and fear of you. And at this time, we remember Sir David Amos, who was murdered a few days ago. Father, we, we just pray that you receive him into your kingdom and you comfort his loved ones and comfort the loved ones of all who are bereaved, because there are many who are bereaved right now. So Lord, I pray that you will hold them all in the palm of your hands. For your dear name's sake we pray. Finally, Lord, we ask that you be with us, our family and friends. Keep us safe, from danger seen and unseen, and bless us to be fruitful for you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now join in the peace. Um, please stand if you can. We'll share the peace together. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. So brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. And for those watching online, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Peace be with you all. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're now going to sing our next hymn, which is. Hymn number seven Come Down, O Love Divine. Come Down, O Love Divine. Hymn number seven.
comings with, with loathing. As so the young strong with which the soul Father, we thank you for these gifts and thank you for all who have given this day, through the week, and those who have given online and various other ways. May you bless these gifts that they may be used for the purpose of your kingdom, to glorify your name, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll now join in our Eucharistic prayer, which is on your blue sheets. Please sit or kneel as is most suitable for you. Our Eucharistic prayer on your blue sheets. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you. Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And we'll join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We invite any communicant members of any Christian churches to come forward to receive communion. 
If you do not wish to, to partake of the bread, you can still come forward and receive a blessing. Um, children especially are welcome to come um, receive a blessing. Um, we haven't yet got um, uh, guidance about drinking from the same um, cup at the moment, so we are um, still just receiving the bread. I will take uh, the, the wine on behalf of the congregation. And um, the instructions about coming forward, when you do come forward, please come down. The, the ushers will show you what to do. Come down the middle aisle, please. Can we come down in one queue? And once you receive the bread, please go back using the side aisles, please. Um, so we don't have any sort of congestion in, in the middle aisle. So brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Son, the light unfailing, has come from heaven to deliver the world from the darkness of ignorance. Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life and walk in it without stumbling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer after communion on your blue sheets. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We have uh, one or two notices, but I'll start with um, my own mistakes in the notices, making the notices. So please... I ask for your forgiveness if uh, this has kind of caused any problems. Um, if you look at the, um, the prayer for the week, I uh, completely forgot to change the prayer for this coming week. So please, um, I apologize for that. But um, if you log in, as usual, on St. John's website, um, the, the, those who are leading will have the prayers. They'll have the special prayer and the verses and so on. They'll, we'll share that with you as we start the prayers. So I apologize for that, please. Um, that, that's my error. I was probably a bit too busy running around and doing various other things. And um, John, our lovely um, welcomer, has also pointed out that I wrote advanced dates for in October and proceeded to write the dates in November, um, which, again, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm a curate, for goodness sake, you know? Give me a break here, you know? Anyway. Um, that is another mistake. I apologize for that. Um, 
It is, I'll, next time I'll just put advanced dates. <laughs> okay, that's easier. Um, and while we're talking about that, uh, talking about the advanced dates, please don't forget, on the 6th of November, we have a lovely concert here, um, led by Baby, um, who, who is our in-house gospel singer. So um, please, if you have any questions you want to ask her, you can ask her. She's right there in the corner. Um, but um, 6th November, um, time was not confirmed yet, but 5 o'clock, we start 5 o'clock, not, not come in at 5 o'clock, we start at 5 o'clock, for about an hour, two hours? About 7, yes, 5 to 7, 6th of November, it's a Saturday, you're all very welcome to come and enjoy um, the songs, um, gospel songs that Babel will be singing, and I think Richard will be joining in as well, yes, this time I got it right. Um... There is another notice which I will put next week. Um, we have a choir that normally meet here. Um, I think it's the East London, John, get me correct. East London Chorus, and that's it. The East London Chorus that always meets on Tuesday. They will be doing a concert here, I think on the, on the 17th. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the correct date. Um, and we'll post that to you soon, at, um, clo closer to the time. No, it wouldn't be 17th, would it be? No, 6th, 13th? No, it's a Saturday, so it's not 17th. Um, I'll, I'll confirm that with you. Yeah, 19th. Yes. Anyway, we'll, we'll, there'll be a concert here, so please, um, I'll, I'll post you um, closer to the time. The rest of the notices um, are pretty much um, the same as the week before, but um, just to remind you, Healing Cafe every Tuesday, 11 o'clock, Thursday, Holy Communion, um, 12.40, Mission Evangelism. Eon, do you want to come and tell us what happened on Saturday? I'm, I'm trying to keep Eon busy. He's our parish evangelist, and I want him to, um, to, to work hard. There you go. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, fortunately, due to the weather yesterday, uh, we didn't quite have... Uh, oh, okay, thank you. Okay. We didn't have quite had evangelism yesterday because of the weather, but what we did was we stayed in and prayed and uh, it was a great time in, we spent a great time in prayer but we, we are having our next outreach on the 30th of, of October so if anyone is interested you can see me after the service or just turn up on, on the 30th uh, we meet on 11 o'clock in the cafe uh, for 11 o'clock for prayer and we go out at 11.30 hopefully we have, we have good weather this time um, yesterday was great f for prayer, but um, we would hope that we had good weather to go out. Uh, I'd like to thank those who put their hand up last week to volunteer to come uh, yesterday. And uh, it was great to see you, and I hope that we'll, see, we'll meet again on the 30th of October with great weather. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Gigi. Do you want to say something very quick about the, the, the meeting that you're going to have, especially for, it's really for the, 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 yeah, but it's really for those who are leading and so on, yeah, the, on the 31st. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you all the helpers uh, from September for our Sunday clubs. So we will have the half-term review on 31st October and as well as training. I would like to invite uh, all the interest party. That means if you are parents or if you want to know what happened for our Sunday club to join. So the date and detail are on the newsletter. So if you have interest, not the current helper, do send me an email. I will give you the detail. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gigi. Thanks for that. Um, Jason, do you want to say anything about the media team yet or no? Not yet. Okay. All right. And all the others, uh, home games, I think you see at the bottom there. That is really f just to let you know that if you come into Stratford on those days, you may um, have problems with parking and so on. Just be aware of that. I think that most of the others are really straightforward. Um, just have a look at that. Please take away your sheets. Once you've had them, we can't do anything with them. Um, you've touched them, you, you know, breathed on them, etc. We really can't, we can't use them for another service, basically. Take the sheets with you. Um, if, if nothing else, you can make paper planes out of them and play in the house. Um, but stick them on your notice boards or fridges, etc. And there is good stuff here. Please take them and pray. That, that there's a whole list of prayer points there. Um, take them and pray um, for those points that I listed there. 
I think that's more or less it, except birthdays. Okay. And our thanks to Gigi, who always does the birthdays um, every Sunday. Uh, well, not Sunday. You, you do it every week, really. But thank you very much for preparing the birthdays every week. Thank you. Okay. Birthday for Joshua Beckles. Joshua Beckles here. Joshua, uh, Grandma is here. Come on. Happy birthday. Happy fourth birthday. <laughs> there you go. Thank well done. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, Maya Mugambwa. Yay, Maya. You've, all the noise you've been hearing in the church. Happy birthday, Maya. Happy first birthday. Yay. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay. All right. And Victoria An Aniemeka? Victoria Aniemeka? No, maybe you're watching online. Happy birthday, happy 10th birthday to you, Victoria. We'll send your card off um, by post. Da, da, sorry? Davine. Davine Asuoha. Well, Dad is telling me here. All right. Happy 16th birthday. Happy birthday. Is she here? Happy birthday to Davine. Please send her our best wishes. And, Vic, well, I just did that. Rowana Reed. Rowana Reed? Nope. Rowana Reed? No, you know. Certainly not. Um, happy 17th birthday to Rowana. If you're watching online, happy birthday to you as well. And a few more here. Um, Alistair Probert. Alistair, is he here now? No, nope, they're not here today. Uh, Julio Mateus. No, Julio is not here. I'll wish him his birthday tomorrow. I'll see him tomorrow. Lillian Omwaka. Lillian Omwaka. No. Nope. Okay, happy birthday to you, Lillian. Ohi Ladi Bare, Ohi. He's not here today. Okay, happy birthday to you, Ohi. Um, Heather Joy, Heather. Nope, happy birthday to you. And last but certainly not least, Shiva Williams. Yay! Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Richard, do you want to sing that song? Yeah, why not? Yes, okay. I was going to risk it, but no. Not a, not a, no, no, please. No, 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 no. Very bad idea. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. We'll rehearse they, next, next week. They will leave. If, oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. it's nice for us to give a blessing to those who are having their birthdays and celebrating um, every week. So we thank God for that. So um, our next hymn, which is also our last hymn, um, Lead Us Heavenly Father, Lead Us, hymn number 10. Please stand if you can.
two things I'd like to just announce. Um, one is uh, one of our sisters here, mom, had a birthday through the week, I think. Yes? Do you want to say something there? Yeah, on Friday, I thank the almighty God. I was 70 on Friday. Oh, Last Friday. happy birthday. <laughs> is there any more cake left? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm pushing my luck here. All right. Um, And the other notice I want to make, um, this is for us as a church. Um, If there's anybody who um, is good at first aid or has a first aid certificate, please let us know, let me know, or you can go to the back. Kay is standing at the information point. Let them know. It would be nice for us to have somebody in the church in case we have um, um, any sort of emergencies or whatever, just to know that there's somebody around who can help um, if we had to go through that. Amen. So brothers and sisters, go out in the Holy Spirit. Go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and live your lives with fruit. Go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and change your communities. Change your families. Change this nation. Go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and claim back that which the devil is trying to steal. Go back, go out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And bring the kingdom of God upon this earth. And so may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. And of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God almighty the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. Be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Shout for joy.